Hi there, this is Alana. You're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am here with my friend and co-host, Jamie Hampton. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about prayer meetings and some of the kind of issues that could come up in prayer meetings and a little bit of troubleshooting if you find yourself in one of these kinds of prayer meetings. So without any more ado, let's jump into a word of prayer. And hopefully Jamie will get through this without her case of the giggles. We've had a almost, I almost was like, we can't do the prayer because I'm laughing so hard because I read ahead to our just for fun question and it made me <laughs> laugh, but I can do this. Okay. You can do this. Okay. I We're good. You can Let's do all pray. things. Yes. <laughs> God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this topic of discussion, Lord, that we'd be able to just um, talk about prayer meetings and troubleshooting some of the problems that we come across in our meetings with other people. And we just pray this time would be fun, that it would be um, glorifying to you and that it would be informative and, and just help us to grow in our prayer lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I made it. Our verse of the day is from 516. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And I just thought that was a great verse. We're talking today about um, prayer meeting troubleshooting, kind of, you know, some problems that might come up during your prayer meetings. And one of the huge aspects of of meeting together in prayer is confessing your sins to one another. And Alana and I have talked about, I think we even have a whole episode about the power of confession in our prayer lives. But I know that if that's not a component of your prayer meetings, we would really encourage you to include that as part of your prayer meetings with other women or maybe just one other woman as, as a prayer mm -hmm. partner. I think you need to be kind of wise. And that's true. We don't want to just air like in, in the prayer meetings, but if it's a small group or if it's at least a, um, a trustworthy you know, group, trustworthy group or mm -hmm. one other person, it's really powerful, but it Absolutely. just does talk about, you know, confessing your sins to one another, but praying for each other that you may be healed because there can be so much healing that takes place in prayer meetings too. Oh, for sure. And you and I kind of geek out about the science of prayer and, oh, yeah. you know, all these studies about how good prayer is just for your physical health. I mean, there's def definitely the spiritual component there, too. But uh, it's interesting just to study even the, the physical benefits of prayer. So our just for fun question, I think this is going to be great. This is what got you giggling <laughs> in, yes. our, in our first take. I Do you have a funny autocorrect story? So I'm really curious to learn about what fiery farts is. <laughs> Okay, so I was writing an e or writing an email to missionaries that our church supports. Oh yes, I remember this story now. They asked for prayer, and this is one of the very first. I don't know them well. I mean, I had interacted with them maybe once or twice by email, but I just felt really led to write like a written prayer in an email to them. And I was typing on my phone, and so as I was typing this email out. Um, I was quoting, I think, a scripture that talked about the fiery darts of the enemy or something. And for whatever reason, maybe I misspelled it quickly or it, <laughs> but it auto corrected it to fiery farts <laughs> instead of fiery darts. And I, it wasn't until I went back and reread the whole thing to kind oh, of. Had you already sent it? it? No, no, I hadn't. Uh, no, I reread before I send usually. Uh -huh. And so I reread it and I did not send it, but I thought, oh my goodness. And realistically, they probably would have gotten a huge laugh out of it, just like I did and do uh -huh. about it. Another one is I have a friend named Tara, and for whatever reason, my autocorrect. I don't, I still don't know. I think it autocorrects. I type so fast, you know, when I'm texting. Right, right. I don't know if I accidentally type it and it doesn't correct it but I know that a couple of times it ha I've typed something that it auto corrects it to Tata uh -huh, instead of Tara so instead of Tara yeah so <laughs> those are two I know there's another one that I can't think of that it was someone's name and it auto corrected it to something embarrassing oh no I don't know do you have any auto correct stories not that I can think of off the top of my hand head but I do have a funny wrong text oh I have two funny wrong text numbers okay so one of them's you do you remember this it was like two years ago 
I had been emailing, emailing my husband. <clears throat> he just came and gave me the dates that he was going to be gone on this business trip. And you and I had been trying to get together for a while by then. So as soon as I get the dates for my husband, he texts them to me. I write a text to you. I'm like, hey, Scott's going to be gone between here and here. Do you want to come and spend the week with us? Right. Except I didn't send it to you. I sent it to my husband. <laughs> right. And, and we all had a good laugh. And I was glad that listed in there, it was like, do you want to make a girls weekend out of it? So it was very clear that I was not inviting, you know, some other male over while my husband right. was gone. Like he would even think that. Oh, I know. Still, it was, just we, we all got a laugh from that. Oh yeah. And I then, remember that. <clears throat> This other one, this was just like last weekend. So I get this text. It's from a number I don't know. And it says, please pray for so-and-so. And also such and such is missing. And we're looking for who and who. And so I show Scott this text. I'm like, do you know who these people are? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, would it be weird for me to like say, hey, who are you? And he's like, no, you know, figure out. Um, there were a couple people I thought it might be, but I'm like, I don't, you know, like I didn't recognize the names of the people they were asking for prayer for anything. Mm -hmm. So I wrote back, I'm like, I'm happy to pray for you, but I actually don't recognize your contact number. Who is this? And they come back and they're like, oh, this is such and such as friend. We met at the place in place. And like, none of these are things that are ringing any bells at all. Oh, no. And so I just kind of leave it be and forget about it. I was in the middle of getting dinner ready and stuff anyway. And so, um, like 20 minutes later, they write back and, um, they had a missing animal and that was one of their prayer requests. And I get the text back and they're like, you know, Hey, we found so-and-so. And I'm like, Oh, that's great. Like, and, and at this point I felt like I had to be like, I think you're, you know, you're texting the wrong person. Mm -hmm. And then they come back and they say, well, isn't this the pastor's wife? And like, well, Yes, technically, kind of, but not the pastor's wife that you think I am. It was just very, very funny. And it turned into a, you know, like once they realized that, no, I, I really, really wasn't who they thought I was, oh. but I was happy to pray for them. Um, it just turned into like this really cute exchange. Like, yeah, let your church friends know to be praying for who and who. <laughs> like, okay. Oh my goodness. That is funny. So that was funny too. So who knows, maybe they're listening to the podcast, in which case um, it's fun to, uh, to have been connected. <laughs> if they recognize the names who and who and such and such. That's then, right. That's right. Uh, then yes. <laughs> I love that. That was really like, I think that whole like interchange of, of all those names is <laughs> worthy of, I don't know, its own podcast episode. Yeah, right. The, the testimony of who and who. Yes, I like it. Our next <laughs> Right, right. Let's do it. So I guess today's, there really wasn't a huge reason that that was the just for fun. Usually I could stretch it, but there's really no, you know, I guess the idea of, of troubleshooting, auto-correcting, oh, whatever, right. mm -hmm. but you know, our, our discussion is going to be about what happens if you're in a prayer group and you know, what I started this out is in my prayer group, what do I do if dot, 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 and we'll give you some scenarios because I think. Alana, we have both probably been in our fair share of prayer groups, and mm -hmm. I have experienced all of these in my own at different times where our groups have actually talked about these issues yeah. at different times, and really this, I'm going to start with the one that began this whole thing, which is kind of um, what made me think about this episode was, but before you start, do you okay, mind if no, I no, throw no. in a super, super fast disclaimer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love disclaimers. And, yeah. And that is that, you know, no prayer group is perfect. Right. And I think especially like people who have a real heart for prayer, like you and me and our listeners, I think there can be uh, maybe a prevalent sense of dissatisfaction with our prayer groups. And so I just yeah. want to be careful that like praying with a group, even if your group has every single one of these problems is still better than not. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and so these are ways that instead of like pointing fingers, I mean like, oh, what unhealthy prayer groups, is it, is it, instead of that, let's be thankful that we live in a place where we can meet for prayer and that there are other believers that we can pray with. And then if we do happen to be in one of these prayer groups that has some of these things going on, here are some suggestions to make it better. I'm so glad you said that. And, you know, and another point is like this one that I'm about to bring up is something about me that I noticed. And so 
be introspective, even if you don't. Right. Know, Not, you oh, Sandy that does that every time right. we pray together. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, right. so look inward first. And if this is yeah. something that resonates, then, you know, but I think the beautiful thing is when we are in a body of Christ, it makes conflict resolution so much easier in some way, maybe not easier, but we have Christ at the center and, and theoretically that should make things. Yeah, I'm biting my tongue so much. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> okay. So maybe it doesn't scratch that. Back this is up. the woman who's not a pastor's wife. I'm yeah. So okay. Sorry. No, no, no. All right. That's right. Let's back that up. I'm going to give you an example of something I came across that I do have experience with. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway. So this is the thing that started this. What I noticed about myself was when I was in a prayer meeting, um, I, and we would have weekly prayer meetings at the time that this came to my mind. I always felt like, especially if I was one of the last people and there were some really big prayer needs out there, like, you know, I'm struggling with, I've lost this, you know, important person to me or someone is sick or my child is having this huge issue or, you know, and if I didn't have a, as big an issue as the people that went before me, I thought somehow I was less because mm -hmm. I had, I didn't have a big prayer request and that I would sound petty or right. guilty because mm -hmm. my prayer request would sound silly. Or worse yet, I didn't, I couldn't think of anything at that point in my life. And that's even worse because then how do you follow up these horrible situations that people are going through with, oh, I'm good. Let me yeah. praise the Lord. Everything's great, you know? Right. So I feel like what if you are in a situation where you feel like you have the need to, to have a big prayer request at each meeting? Or, um, or you feel guilty because your prayers seem silly while others are dealing mm -hmm. with big life issues. And the thing I came away with is it's okay to be okay. It's the opposite of that song. Every time I hear this song by uh, We Are Messengers, it's, it's okay if I'm not okay. Anyway. Huh, I don't know. But it's okay if you are okay. So right. you know, a praise is a prayer too. And you never know if you sharing praises is going to uplift people or, you know, mm -hmm. are you sharing something that to you seemed really trivial? Like, you know, maybe your dog has a stomach ache and you're really worried mm -hmm. about her, you know, I mean, yeah. that's important. And so to come into your prayer meetings, being transparent and not digging deep to try and because it's not healthy for you as a person, it's not healthy for me as a person to go to a prayer meeting with the mindset of, I need to find something to complain about because that's yeah, really, that can be what it turns into. That's what it was turning into for me is, Hmm, what am I going to store up to complain about at the prayer meeting? Right. I want to make sure that I sound like I'm struggling because I don't want to make someone feel bad who really is. Struggling. Right. Not to say right. that there aren't plenty of times when I am struggling. So mm -hmm, it's like, mm -hmm. just make sure to be aware that there are seasons of life and prayer meetings, praise is, is awesome. Praise and Thanksgiving can, it, mm -hmm. it, and it has been really powerful for me to have women in our prayer meeting that have said, I, you know what, I I'm doing really well now. And I just have a praise to share, or, you know what, I just praise mm -hmm. God that right now, nothing comes to mind that I need prayer for. And I just know, you know, I don't know. I just think that's, um, I don't know. Maybe that's not a good way to put it, that nothing comes to mind that I need prayer for, but. No, but I know what you're saying. Sometimes yeah. there is this pressure to kind of manufacture drama. Yeah. And then that I drama like just keeps feeding in, you know, so like you leave this meeting just overwhelmed and bogged down as opposed to feeling uplifted and cared for. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And there can even be, sometimes there can be competitiveness, like, Oh, well, you know, not that it's competition, Jamie, but your dog sick. Well, we just had to put my cat down, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's not a, you know, we're really meant to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And, you know, like if I were to share about, you know, my grandpa dying and you're sitting there sad because your dog has a cold, you know, then you might feel, oh, it's going to sound so petty, like you said to go after, you know, so I don't know, it, it can lead into those kinds of 
questions and either self-censoring like, oh, I don't want to bring this up because that just sounds right. so silly that I'm worried about this. You know, like maybe you're you're worried about how to pay for your Disneyland vacation and the person who shares a request before you is about to get evicted, <laughs> you right. know? And like in yeah. total honesty, yeah, that probably would be an insensitive thing to share yeah. <laughs> at Maybe that exact you minute. You should keep that one to yourself. <laughs> or the other thing that you could do though is stop and say, you know what, can we pray right now for that person? You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if someone shares something that's really deep and profound yeah. and, you know, to just say, hey, let's just pray for this person now. Or, you know, I, that could be... That could be a good thing too, just to make the focus on lifting up the people that do have prayer. The heavier needs, yeah. The heavier needs, yeah. But, but then you sometimes get, you know, that one person who every single week, you know, like there, there needs to kind of be a little bit of, I mean, because that could turn into a problem too, where, you know, it's a quote unquote prayer meeting, but it's kind mm -hmm. of turned into like group counseling for Sally or who's right. who and or what's that what? is. Yeah. And that's one of our situations is one person tends to take over. They always have extensive prayer requests and there's just no room for others to share by the end of the time. Or energy even, you know, right. or yeah. And sometimes I think that's okay. You know, like sometimes let's say that there's a group of five people who get together to pray once a week. Mm -hmm. And one of those days, you know, someone just found out that her husband has terminal cancer. Like it makes absolute sense for the focus at the that meeting to be praying for this woman and her husband and what they're going through. You know, even if that means that such and such is lost necklace doesn't get prayed for. Right. But if that turns into like every single week, it, it, it's harder. You know, like I think there are seasons where for sure you might need more prayer. You might be more on the receiving end than not, but it, it is hard to know kind of what to do in those situations if someone is taking up so much space. Cause like who, who wants to be the one to be like, sorry, we don't have time to pray for you. Like, <laughs> well, and especially during seasons, you know, like, um, like, like someone going through a terminal illness or a problem with a child or a divorce or, you know, whatever it is that that's, a very painful thing it, it there it's not just going to be one meeting you know because i know right. in, in our prayer group that um that i was part of for several years here it was pretty neat because it seemed like every week someone different kind of without planning someone different had a need and, mm -hmm. and we focused on that person almost and that's like, kind of the best way for yeah, it to work and out. it was really neat but it was totally unplanned mm -hmm. um there have been other times where we have walked certain people through certain times and it has been, you know, several weeks of really that person was the main person, mm -hmm. but we always seem to make room for other people too. And I think, right. I, I really think, you know, some just practical solutions could be if you find yourself in that position, um, doing, you know, time limits, like up front saying, hey, let's mm -hmm. everyone take five minutes and we're just going to give each person five minutes to share just, you know, or, or you could say, hey, let's each person share one request each. And again, maybe you need to put a time limit on it too. Mm -hmm. um, another thought is having each person write down prayer requests and then trade papers and go around the group and each person pray right. for each other because then you're prayer time is actually centered on the prayer. Cause I know that's another mm -hmm. issue is sometimes the talking takes up the entire time. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the prayers tacked on at the end. Right. Which is unfortunately, I, I led a Bible study this fall and that's what happened almost every time. I just felt like, and it was a prayer study <laughs> and right. I felt like we, and sometimes that conversation was needed, but I, mm -hmm. I feel like the prayer ended up taking a back burner to the discussion. So right, right. And you know, there is a balance, you know, how much structure do you want to have? How sure. much, you know, I mean, I, I kind of like it when it does feel more conversational, like, you know, buzz your time's up and let's move on. Like mm -hmm. that can be, but right. sometimes that might be, you know, the best way to handle it, you know, to make sure that things are getting covered and you know, me, I love praying with timers, but <laughs> right. And, and it is that structure um, if you have a group, well, so what happens if you do have a group where it is too structured, um, and you feel like the group is needing time to talk, or maybe it's not mm -hmm. structured enough and you have that chatting, you know, maybe one thing you could do is 
add uh, just a fellowship time or like a, you know, like one meeting a month or one meeting a quarter where all you do is catch up or you know, mm -hmm. a lot, 15 minutes at the end just for visiting or, you know, something yeah. like that and really protect that time, you know, if you need to do that. But I, I think you're right. It really is important to have the connection time, to know, to have things mm -hmm. come up that will help you know how to pray more for those people. Right. And I think, you know, for especially if you're just starting a prayer group, I think that's why it's really important to just have it laid out there. Because there are so many ways to do a prayer meeting, mm -hmm. and most of the time people just call it prayer meeting. So like, are we meeting? I think the most common ones I can think of, you know, prayer meetings for your church, where really it's not even for the people who are there. It's like we are lifting up the ministries of the church, lifting up our pastor, mm -hmm. lifting up the prayer needs that we know are within the church. Um, there's a kind kind of like that you're talking about where it's we're praying for each other. You know, so we're all showing up, we're sharing the prayer requests that we have in our own personal lives. Mm -hmm. um, I was part of a, a prayer team that was kind of specific for missions, and that was really neat because, you know, that's sometimes my, um, my beef with some church prayer meetings is, like, I think it's great to pray for each other, obviously. I think it's super important to pray for your church, but most of the ones I've been in recently don't get beyond that. Right. And, and sometimes that's okay, but you know, it's nice to have that spelled out at the beginning. Like, what are we praying for? Um, that's but again, a good point. I think it can be overstructured too. You know, like I don't think you need to show up with your 20 bullet points then, <laughs> you know, like assigned to each one. I, you know, there's so many different ways that you can do it, but it's nice to know what the, what the purpose is. Yeah, no, I like that. I like the fact that because if if people are just if your heart is, you know, well, North Korea is really on my heart. Mm -hmm. It might feel weird to say that after you've heard about, you know, Johnny's not meeting friends in kindergarten and um, mm -hmm. Sarah has a toothache. That might right. feel like, well, I want to pray for North Korea. <laughs> right. No, so, it, it for sure. It, yeah. It, yeah. So that's that's a really good point. And yeah, sadly, a lot of church prayer meetings don't really get past just physical ailments, which again is important. But, um, you know, it, it can be pretty common where you show up to a prayer meeting and that's right. all that gets prayed for. And so, you know, in those cases, you aren't getting to the deeper levels of what people really truly need. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about gossip because that's a big one. I think it is. Yeah. And I've, yeah, I know that I have caught myself doing it um not so much in a prayer meeting but like with you sometimes when we'll have discussions i will say things and i've told you this before or i've said this i think shared to the podcast before that um especially like i'll talk because you know i'll say well let's pray for our relationships let's pray for our husbands and then i'll sort of sneak in something my husband did that i didn't like <laughs> uh -huh. and you know that's pretty much just talking trash about him and Mm -hmm. making it look like there is constructive discussion mostly but i i have slipped that stuff in where i feel mm -hmm. like it's kind of gossipy and mm -hmm. sorry matt <laughs> just keeping it real right um, yeah but what do we do well i think it can get way worse than that you know if yeah. you're if you're just saying like i <laughs> i started going to this prayer meeting it was um like this woman's prayer meeting and I only went a couple times and my husband was like, why, why aren't you going back? This doesn't make sense to me. Like, this seems like exactly what you would want to do. And I think what kind of sealed the deal for me, you know, I've been thinking about what I said at the very beginning with my disclaimer that some prayer meetings better than no prayer meeting. And I think that maybe I want to take my words back <laughs> because this prayer meeting it, I didn't like going and so I stopped going and I really still stand by that decision because first of all, these were people who had been in this area for decades. So they were praying about people I didn't even know about and it would be not even guised as gossip. Like the conversation would go like this. We'll go back to so-and-so. So any other prayer requests? And then someone would say, oh, well, you know, so-and-so. And then 20, not 20, there weren't that many of us. Five women would go, oh, yeah, 
so and so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then, you know, someone would be like, well, how is such and such doing with so and so? I was like, well, oh yeah. No, I heard that such and such, like it was not even secondhand. We were getting to like fifth hand information and and it really not even was, disguised as prayer. Just not even disguised. Gossip. No, it was mm -hmm. very much, yeah, we gotta pray for this person. They're off the wagon again, or you know, just oh, boy. it was um so yeah, I, I think I do take back what I said at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in that case, you know, like each time I look like, you know, heaven forbid they talk about me one day like that. Right. Well, and it probably would happen, you know, based on that. If I so. stuck around long enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I got off the wagon, but you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm good and sober now. So we're good. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, and so basically what you did was definitely a solution. If, if there's a group where it's that blatant, and especially since you were a late comer, it wasn't like yeah. you were the leader of this group. Mm -hmm. You were a late comer, mm -hmm. leave, get out as yeah. quickly as you can. There are so many other prayer groups, start your own group, which actually yeah. will be another podcast episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's something you need to exit immediately. But what if someone is, what if this is starting to creep in and what if you are in a position of, of authority, what do you think could be done if you notice this, not maybe that blatant, but it's starting to creep in and become a bad, you know, like bad seeds are being planted. How would you maybe handle that if you were in a position of authority? So I think in this case, we need to kind of take, um, take our example from Catholic nuns and just carry around a really big ruler and slap people really hard on the wrist when they get out of line. You you think? Not. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, you know, I think for sure you can, there are things that you can do to foster um, better. You know, I, I really like what you said, like, let's pray for them right now. Like that can really stop a lot of gossip mm. because if they're going on and on and on about so-and-so and you say, all right, let's stop and pray for so-and-so. That's a good one. There's no more gossip going on <laughs> at that point. And it, and it really reminds people that, okay, we're actually here to pray, not to, you know, revel in the you know, and what's going on. And I think even just maintaining compassion for who you're praying for is important because I think there's a difference between praying for somebody because your heart is heavy for them. And kind of like what you were saying, how sometimes you feel like you need to come up with this big old sensational prayer need. And so if you don't have something, but you know somebody who does, it's almost like since sensationalism vicariously through that person yeah and so just you know i think fostering also just some compassion for the people you're praying for can go a long way and um maybe even like soliciting somebody else in the group to mm -hmm. just like you know between you and me hey jamie i've kind of noticed like you know you don't even need to name name names i've kind of noticed that sometimes we get into what i feel is a little bit on the verge of gossip, could you kind of help me steer the conversation when it gets to that point, you know, maybe by just saying, hey, how about I'll pray for them right now or something. Uh, maybe recruiting someone else to be a lookout for that could be helpful. That's good. I really like that one. And, you know, I think a rule could be if you're going to share a prayer request for someone else, that you would have to be a hundred percent okay. Like basically just imagine that they're in the room with you so that everything that you're sharing is something that they're totally fine with being shared. Sure. Just um, make that kind of a guideline. Kind of the guideline. Like, is this yeah. how you would share this request if, you know, so-and-so was sitting right here? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think there's a way to pray for so-and-so while she's right there, but in a way that doesn't make her feel, um, you know, called out, belittled, anything like that. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you're not the leader, if you don't have any kind of, of, you know, ability to implement some of these things, pray for your prayer group. You know, that's mm -hmm. kind of a meta concept, but pray for your prayer group and, you know, just, just lift them up and pray and be the example yourself and, and don't fall into these things yourself. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's half the battle. Yeah. And you could always seek, um, like we talked about, seek, even if it's not a new prayer group, maybe just like a, a prayer partnership that can go deeper or yeah. something like that. In addition, I don't think that, you know, one person says one thing you don't like, you don't get up and leave. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I got up and left. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. No, sometimes I do think that there are times where 
yeah, just find another group at other times. Maybe it's just, you know, stick it out with that group, but also find a prayer partner or another group that can go deeper if that's what you're craving. Sounds good. All right. Well, I guess we can close with our blessing and our benediction. Let's do it. All right. Our blessing first. today says, may God pour out his love into your heart by the spirit he has given you. May he satisfy you in the morning with his unfailing love. May he take great delight in you and rejoice over you with singing. May God direct your hearts into his unfailing love and Christ's perseverance, that these would be forever your support. Our benediction is 2 Peter 1, 2. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Amen.